Clayton Williams. Dinosaurs. All right. Let's be honest here. That was probably the last thing you were expecting at this speech. But allow me to explain. Mr. Soto has mentioned in our anatomy class that the young man who spoke at his commencement speech opened with this same word, minus the puppet, with the idea <laughs> that this word would be the only part to be remembered in his entire speech. And it was. <laughs> <laughs> Now it will be. <laughs> Mr. Morvan, um, I apologize for my unusual opening, but given your circumstances, you only had six days to choose from. <laughs> Just be thankful my parents stopped me from wearing my horse head mask. <laughs> Good call, Mom. <laughs> so now that I got that out of my system, it's time for me to explain why something of this nature could possibly come out of the mouth and hand of a valedictorian from Christ Episcopal. And I have three words to formally begin my speech. We have character. I'm not afraid to admit that, neither are we. It would be unfair and dishonest if I gave you a regular speech many valedictorians give, where they insert fancy and sophisticated words that they pull from their thesauruses to flaunt their school's academic prowess. And you know, the real question to ask is, do I even need words to describe what our students have accomplished. If you were present at our most recent award ceremony and witnessed the achievements of our students, then I don't need to elaborate in descriptive and monotonous detail everything we've done. Not every school, especially the fantastically huge population that we have, is able to send 15 students to the district literary rally and a third of those receiving st state recognition. Not every school sends a student to a state science fair every year. Well, almost every year, one student forgot to go a couple years ago, and sorry, Mr. Soto, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing was more embarrassing than arriving at school that one morning, only, be, only to be told by a fellow student, Clayton, shouldn't you be like at a science fair or something? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> well, Mr. Soto, I need to thank you for your patience these past five years. Anyway. As previously stated, I'm not here to list everything our 40 students have accomplished. If I did, I would keep you here for more than an hour. However, I am here to inform you who we are, because I believe that that is something missing in most commencement speeches. So ladies and gentlemen, this is who we are. We are the lovers of poetry, the loud laughers, the philologists, the photographers, the movie critics, the bass players who have perfect attendance every year, the screaming vacuum cleaner who is an astonishing debater and Koshak contain yourself, wait until I get my diploma. We are the actors, the sheep showers who can bake the best cake and pie you could ever have just because it was your birthday. And Karen, there is no way that was your first baked lemon meringue pie. That is too delicious to be true. We are the guitar and baseball players, the future, future veterinarians, the student council presidents who could outswim anyone in this school. We are the several quiet ones who, when asked to speak, speak profound, profound words. We are the philosophers, the gymnasts who can write astonishing poetry while doing a backflip at the same time. <laughs> that, may be a little, that may be a little fabricated, but with enough practice, I believe you can. We are the lax bros, the news anchors, the ice hockey fans who so happen to live in a state where ice is a fictional concept. Nonetheless, you will find Mr. Murphy watching a hockey game rooting for the Penguins. And if you think this list is closing to a finish, you're wrong. Because we are the followers of Christ. We are the sailors. We are the constituency of the first seal fish in the Republican Kingdom. My lord, what a mouthful. We are the geocachers, the future ophthalmologists, the future missionaries, the mathematical geniuses, the super saiyans, even though my name's not Jalen, and Hernandez, that is as far as that's gonna go. 
We are the sloth shanots who desire to escape Earth's harsh gravity and reach for the stars. We are friends, we are family, we are Christ Episcopal students. Ladies and gentlemen, the character sketch that I have just shared only covered 20 students in our junior and senior class. And if you thought anything from that list was confusing, you should count your blessings because I refuse to list the attributes of the ninth and 10th grade because that would be truly confusing. <laughs> but let's be serious here. It's not like the juniors and seniors didn't act like that two years ago. <laughs> so now for the second part of my commencement speech. And that's to give the students of this high school some advice. But I have a deep and profound question to ask all of you before I do this. Would you trust and take advice from someone who just brought a puppet dinosaur to his commencement speech? <laughs> That's a good answer. So, as I was writing my speech, I started to think about my future. And instead of advice, I will tell you how I plan to live my life. And then maybe you can go home with your own message in mind. It's tempting for me to leave this graduation saying to myself in a celebratory manner, Yes, this is it. I'm free. I no longer have to be a student anymore. But I pray that I will not state something so irresponsible in my entire life. What do you mean that I will never have to be a student again? When should I stop, ask, stop asking questions? When should I stop searching for answers? When should I stop reflecting my past actions and thoughts and ask myself how I can become a better friend a better man, a better civilian. When should a poet stop asking the question of how he or she can change the world with just a couple of stanzas? When should a philologist stop asking himself how he can revive a long lost language? When should a politician stop asking him or herself how to rally men and women to bond together and stand for something? When should philosophers stop asking themselves whether a god exists or not? And when should a missionary or preacher stop asking herself how she could spread the word of God for his glory alone? When should a teacher stop asking him or herself how to effectively educate his or her students? But I can tell you one thing. Our teachers at Christ Episcopal School ask those questions day after day after day. And I can tell you, my parents, despite my adolescent hard-headedness at times, have always asked themselves how they could become a better mother and a better father. And they have. These questions are not just asked by anyone, but they are asked by men and women who humble themselves and admit that they are forever students. And this takes a lot of effort. This is not easy. Because the moment you ask yourself a question, you are now responsible to find the answer. And human beings are many times afraid of feeling responsible for something. And it is scary. Being responsible for the safety of your child isn't easy. Being responsible for the academic performance of a child can put yourself at the risk of a bout of depression when you learn that your student has failed to accomplish something. The headmaster of a school is responsible for the well-being and education of his students. And when he comes across a question that he can't answer immediately, the feeling of responsibility is always on his consciousness. And I will tell you this, Mr. Homer and Mr. Morvant, although they were leaders and teachers of the school, were not afraid to admit that they were students under the eyes of God, always in search to ask the right questions and to endlessly search for the answer to the problem. That is, what scared, that is what carried our school on eagle's wings. So how I plan to live? I will plan to live how I've been taught to live these past 18 years. How I've been taught by my school, by my family, by my teachers, by my close, close friends, and by my God to remain a student until I'm in my grave. Students, no matter what university I may attend or how many degrees I may have, if any, I will never make the mistake to become prideful of my knowledge because I will always remain as a student and an equal to you all. To not remain a student is putting waste to 12 long years I've spent in school to learn how to become a student. Not remaining as a student is damaging to the mind 
to others, to your community, and does not fulfill the purpose of your creation. For you should trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. Thank you. Thank you for your attention, and congratulations to the graduates of the class of 2013.